How's it going this afternoon, everybody? Uh, what I want to talk to you in this video about is how to use the foliage material modifier inside of Lumion. Um, now, there are a couple of ways to kind of get this same effect. Um, you could use something from the nature library, but that gives you more of like a, a shrub than it does kind of like dynamic leaves. Uh, and then there's also the leaf material. So I'm going to quickly show you kind of how those two work. But the foliage is, in my opinion, better than those two options because it gives you much more control over what walls the leaves are on, I guess, how, ma how many leaves. Um, or how high up it goes, whereas with the leaf material, just everything on the wall, everything with that same material ID will change. Uh, so yeah, we can take a look at that now. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna come into this model here, and I just downloaded this in the 3D warehouse and threw a couple materials on it, so there's nothing special here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is first, actually, I'm going to go to the nature library, and I'll show you um, the ivy that I'm talking about. I guess like some leaves that you can kind of put on the uh, just into your scene. Uh, so you can do something like this. Um, and this isn't bad. Uh, you know, they're not the highest quality leaves. So if you are doing something like this, uh, I would recommend you kind of stay further back. The other thing about this too is that it appears that there's no uh, branches inside of them. Uh, it is just kind of the leaves. So as I said, like these aren't, these aren't too bad. I just wouldn't use them if you're um, really up close. So if you want to decorate uh, a wall with leaves, that is one option. And then the other thing you can do is, uh, actually I'm gonna put it up here because it might be a better way to see it. So yeah, if you go to the leaves here, like you can decide to do something like this, except the problem I have with doing this is when they're on a slant like that, they don't kind of lap over each other like they should. And as you can see, um, the leaves actually are the material. And so underneath it, you lose whatever was there. Um, so if I just pop out of that quickly. Uh, now I'll show you how to use the actual foliage slider, and this is the one that I prefer to use. So you go into the material, and then you come down to this um, this tab here, foliage. Um, now what I recommend you do is uh, hold shift while you drag this up, just so that it goes slower, so you can get that right amount. Uh, and then you can also just increase your leaf size depending on what you want. Um, so yeah, obviously the spread will determine like how high up it goes, uh, how many there are, uh, the leaf size, will obviously change how big the leaves actually are. So if I zoom in a little bit on this. So if I go all the way up, as you can see, they're, they're massive, they're way too big, you'd never use it like that. But I find that when you, you're doing something like this, like maybe like 0.2, something below that, then that's a good amount. Um, the leaf type, this is pretty cool too. So as you can see in the actual leaf materials, there are uh, multiple leaves. And you can do the same thing just by changing the leaf type here as well. Uh, they also included, I believe this is it, yeah, there's some pine needles as well. And uh, yeah, so I, I like just having the, the customization there. And uh, the spread pattern offset, that just makes it so that it kind of, I guess, changes the tiling a little bit. So if you need it to be, maybe go around a certain object, you could play with this and see if you can get it, but there are actually better ways of kind of uh, dealing with that. So I don't normally play with the spread pattern too much. And uh, with the ground level, this is like the higher the ground level, the higher the leaves go, the lower the ground level, the lower the leaves go. Um, it's just another way of controlling it where, but in reality, um, I find that spread does the job uh, with no problems. So yeah, that's just a quick look at that. Um, but now you may be wondering like, okay, well, as you can see, every single wall that we apply this to is gonna have leaves on it. And that may not be the case of what we want in the scene. So if we come into our SketchUp model and we just draw something like this, oh, did that work? No. So we draw something like that and something like this. Now I will say this, that Sometimes it seems that when you have the foliage uh, material on and you also have live link and you cut it like this, sometimes it makes um, these cutouts invisible. So uh, we will see if that does that here. Um, and then I'll just show you how I quickly fix it if it does happen, but it doesn't happen all the time. Right, okay, so this time it worked. Um, last night I was playing around with this a little bit and it kept cutting them out. So. Yeah, not a big deal then. Um, so I will just save the changes to this. I'll go back into the material. I'm gonna copy the one with the leaves on it. And I'm gonna paste it right here. So if you do that, obviously we're back to kind of square one. Um, so what you can do after that is you just take the spread down to zero. And then what you can effectively do is have like, if you only want a certain, like maybe you only want this corner to have the leaves on it, then you'd make that a different material ID, put leaves on it, whatever. You have uh, more flexibility like this. Uh, so if you are doing something with like a barn door 
and you know you want all these to be cleared like maybe you know maybe the farmer that's working on this just like uh cuts down all the leaves but he likes kind of this uh I guess this growth, which I don't know if that would happen in real life, but point being, um, you have the ability to kind of control that. And then you can just determine where the leaves will be growing. And as you may have noticed too, uh, if you have just like a flat face and you cut it into different squares, as long as you apply the same material in Lumion, it doesn't matter what the material ID is in SketchUp. So in SketchUp, as you can see, these are clearly different, but in Lumion, if you don't actually know where this yellow line is, you'd never be able to tell. Like if you zoom right in, then you can see like even though it's cutting right through the planks it lines up perfectly and that's because they're they're right on top of each other and that's just how lumion uh, tiles things so if you actually go into camera mode as you can see you've now controlled where the leaves are growing except it doesn't affect your material at all you still have that same material going through uh, all the way now i'll show you uh something else that i this is going to be the second tip with foliage um this is something that i just started doing recently uh with dirt so what we'll do is we'll just put kind of like a ground soil down here and I'm gonna do the same thing now I have had some mixed results with this sometimes I find it can kind of get messed up um, so if you just slightly increase it so this time it seemed to work uh, but if you do increase decrease the leaf size this is something that I, I just noticed I might as well point out so I don't know why these lines are forming uh, it seems that like when the leaves are a bit bigger you don't have this problem but uh, obviously these are like some hidden lines in SketchUp that aren't showing like if I turn yeah hidden geometry it's not showing up um, so there must be something that the way that Lumion is reading SketchUp that is putting these lines in it's not that big of a deal what I just do is I uh, if you just increase the leaf size a little bit and then you decrease the spread uh, I find it's not as uh, prominent like you can kind of control it a bit I will just reduce these down more um, now when I put them on the ground, I find that that can just help add sort of like clutter. And these are the ones I normally put on the ground just because these kind of look like a, almost like a budding flower or a weed. And we might can even increase, decrease that a little bit more. You just want a little bit poking out. And I like doing that. And so then what I would do after that's done is actually, this is a, I put that into a group. So I'm just going to grab this corner, control C, lock it to the Z axis. I'm going to drag it down here a little bit and I'm going to go into this group and I am going to make a grass material on it. So I'll save that, go back into Lumion. Now, as you can see, um, the grass is underneath and we're gonna make that 3D grass. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and reduce, just play around with this until you find kind of like a balance that you want. But as you can see, without actually dropping any props or anything onto the scene, now you have a dirt layer, you have a grass layer, and you also have the foliage layer. Um, and that's normally enough to kind of give you this look of like, I guess sort of like a like a rugged field. You wouldn't have to, uh, you know, it just breaks up the grass. Like, I really like the 3D grass in Lumion, but the thing I don't like about it is that it is only grass and it spreads the entire area. And so it has this look of being extremely clean while also being wild grass at the same time whereas real wild grass has like dandelions it have weeds it have different kinds of uh, even just different kinds of grass so i find that with the foliage tool uh, you can kind of achieve that and then like i said you just control the spread as much as you want so uh, you want to just make it so that you can't see the uh, you can't see the lines too much but that's not really that important you just gotta you just gotta play around with it uh, and then yeah, if you wanted to change the leaf type to maybe something like this to give it more like color or maybe something like this, um, I, I would kind of recommend that uh, you just kind of like you maybe add some leaves in there too. So you could have these color leaves and then um, in nature, uh, if I just go like leaf, uh, something like that. And then you can kind of go like this. And then more or less you have kind of this like this autumn looking scene uh, so uh, since Lu all of Lumion's leaves are um, yellowish um, I find that this is the best way of going about doing that uh, since you can't change the color in here kind of wish that you could but uh, if you use the red leaves as foliage and then the yellow ones that are like objects then you, you kind of get that like I said that autumn mix and uh, it looks really good like that so um, there is a couple things I just kind of want to mention about doing this. If you are having trouble where the leaves, like it almost looks like a bunch of big individual leaves um, and they're not cooperating with you, 
uh, what you can do is you just go and make a grass plane, uh, just like leaf patch, I called this one. And you can actually scale this up so it's like kind of the size that you want. Uh, I recommend that you put the material on it <laughs> before you slide it under, um, or at least have like a little bit poking out because it is a little bit difficult to get at the material once you've uh, clicked it. So uh, this doesn't really matter actually what material we use for this. And we go like spread and leaf size. So you can do that and obviously you can play around with that. And the ground level should be okay there. So I'll come in here and you just kind of just find it about here. Now this is a little bit denser than I would normally use, but just by layering it, as you can see, like it does kind of let you have uh, more flexibility. And if you were to come up here and drag this and copy it, then as you can see, it tiles almost perfectly um, and you won't be able to notice. So if you did want a scene that had like tons of different leaves on the ground um, and you want more ground clutter, you can put it on your top layer um, you can't put it on the 3D grass layer, obviously, but then you can have um, another, like just one plane that you drag in and put the leaves on it. And then now, as you can see, like we're, we have like a lot of, uh, I guess, like um, plant life diversity here. This is kind of overkill, but you do get the point of like what you can do with different uh, foliage layers. Um, you know, if you were doing something that was like a really dense forest, you could just have like five different uh, kinds of leaves on the ground. And then um, it just like makes things look. Um, a lot more alive. Something I don't love about this right now though is just how the leaves are kind of uh, all facing the same direction. But I don't think that's that big of a deal and you can do other things to kind of break it up. Uh, so I'll just get rid of these because they are a lot of clutter. And the last trick I'm going to show you, um, this is actually something that I learned from Adam Ingram. Uh, he's been posting on the Lumion forum lately and uh, what he looked at is just how to uh, almost create like customized trees in a way in Lumion. So if we come in to sketch up here and I just want to make sure this is a group. Yeah. Okay. So we can just draw right on this. So I'm going to make like a little, a uh, little uh, tree trunk here. So I'm going to make this a group. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually I'll do, yeah, I'll do a circle. Uh, I'm going to increase the segments on this 50. And I like to do this. I find that when you actually draw a little line to the center, uh, SketchUp just seems to uh, play a little bit nicer with you. Um, and then, so I'll grab this in the middle. This is how I like to make circles in SketchUp. Um, there's probably other ways of doing it and maybe it's more effective, but this is just kind of how I do it. So I scale this down to 0.99. Uh, I'm gonna flip this up. And then I'm going to grab this, go right to the middle. And I just delete this one out. I delete that. Click on this and follow me. And then you have a pretty, pretty nice sphere. Okay, so now that I've made that, I'm just gonna kind of drag this up here. I'm gonna go up, and then this is a uh, this is a really crude way of doing it. Uh, I'll, I'll link uh, some of his uh, his work, but this is the, the kind of the quick and dirty way of doing it. In reality, what you're gonna do is make another little grass material, uh, apply it to this, and then we're also gonna put like some tree bark on here or something. This is close enough. Uh, and if we save this, we can come in here. As you can see, we have like a perfect uh, circle. So we'll just make this standard. It doesn't really matter um, what one you use. Now you could use leaves for this, but I actually don't know if that's the best way of doing it. Um, it will make some of the areas see-through, um, which may be the effect that you want. Um, but if you want it to look like it's really, really dense, then what I'd actually recommend you do is just go to um, new and go to just like this here so we want the spread now as you can see you do kind of get that uh, it doesn't work perfectly so what I've actually been doing is I'll come in here I'll copy this over again sorry I didn't quite catch that could you please repeat it oh, that's creepy um, and I didn't get that could you try 
just a second. The government's listening in on my Lumion tactics. Um, okay, so I'll change that one, and then I'll scale this down a little bit, and that should be good enough. Uh, so before I drop that one in, I am actually going to copy this material. I'm going to put it onto this one. And then what I like to do is just slightly drag it over and then drag it back in here. And if it sticks out a little bit, um, it's not that big of a deal. Just uh, try to get it in as much as you can. Like, yeah, that's uh, just because you want it to be as spherical as possible. Yeah, and so that should work. Um, and now, as you can see, there are twice as many leaves. So you can play around with that. But as, as you can kind of see, like if you do it like um, in that way, it can make it not a perfect circle. Um, so yeah, there's probably, like I said, there's probably better ways of doing it. Um, and I need to kind of investigate this a little bit more myself. But I did think that that was a pretty cool um, trick. And uh, as I said, I'm going to link uh, the Lumion Collective and uh, some of his other work below. Because uh, I know he has been posting on the forum. So that... Um, you know, I think that that's more or less it. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I think that the uh, foliage modifier is actually a really interesting uh, part of Lumion, and it really adds a lot to your scene. And just one more note, actually, that I did want to touch on that uh, I forgot about. So if you, uh, if you just make a quick scene, you just do like custom style, and then you come to the weather and put wind on, um, and you play this as you can see like all the grass and the leaves actually do move as well so it uh you know it can be a little bit overkill i would never put the strength up that high but if you just have like a little bit of movement it really really adds a lot to your scene so you can just make like kind of like a boring old barn uh have some you know leaves on it make the like have a lot more uh leaves on the ground to make it look more like autumn and uh yeah so i will see you in the next one guys uh, if you're in Canada, I hope you enjoy the long weekend and uh, yeah, until next time.